vaccine mandates, science or politics, the fear problem. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, on this special occasion, may your spirit and power be upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. We progress, my brothers and sisters, from where we left previously. Today we are looking at vaccine mandate, signs or politics. We are looking at this special topic, uh, focusing on the problem of fear. The Bible says in the book of uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 27, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sun, the sea, and the waves roaring. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken we are told that great and mighty things will take place but however men's hearts will be filled with fear men's hearts failing them for fear the question is why do people fear my brothers and sisters god has warned us in the book of isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 the promise says fear not there are quite a lot of things that will make us to fear we fear for our life. We fear for our health. We fear to lose our jobs. We fear to lose our mortgages. We fear to lose our marriage. We fear so many things. And the Bible says, fear not. Oh Lord, please help us not to fear. Fear not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of righteousness. My brothers and sisters, when God has promised that he will be with us, when God has promised us that he will strengthen us, the reality is that God in his mercy and love will strengthen us. My brothers and sisters, we have been, we have feared so much men of us and we have been coerced and we have gone and we have been vaccinated. But now there has been a change and a shift in policy. I'm specifically looking at what is happening in England. So uh, this is actually a case that of what is happening in England regarding this mandatory vaccination policy. Now, it was reported last week in the evening times mandatory uh, covid vaccine for nhs staff x sajid Javid confirmed so he has now confirmed that this has been x he said this has been x for health workers this is the health secretary confirming he said the rule was set to be imposed in april meaning if nhs uh, haven't nhs workers haven't had their first jab by february by they would not be double jabbed in time yes and then they will lose their jobs by then many of them actually were actually saving their notification so notice so that they can leave their jobs because they have not been vaccinated but the question that we need to ask ourselves is why was the policy scrapped was it because a new science was discovered is it because they have made a enough man with vaccination or almost everyone has been vaccinated? You know, I was reading one of the Zimbabwean papers. I was actually fascinated because in Zimbabwe they say all the civil servants have been vaccinated. True or false? Well, they know. I don't know. But I've just read it in the paper. So now in England, we know for sure that not everyone in the NHS was vaccinated and the policy has been crept. But the question is, why have they done that? Have they vaccinated enough people to reach herd immunity? The answer is no. Why have they changed the narrative? Now listen to this, uh, because uh, not the Times, the Sunday Times was saying, shambles as mandatory vaccines for NHS staff in England scrapped. It says the NHS leaders have criticized the shambles of last minute reversal on compulsory coronavirus vaccine for frontline workers. Why did they change on the last minute? It says uh, the health secretary confirmed that the policy is no longer appropriate after the emergence of Omicron. He said uh, that uh, the scales tilted against the policy as the Delta variant was replaced by one that was intrinsically less severe and against which two doses offered little protection. So the admission is that the two doses of vaccine they cannot protect you against Omicron. The question is, did they ever protect you against the Delta? Now he says, he insisted that introducing the requirement in England has been the right policy at the time, as 127,000 staff had since been vaccinated, adding, when the facts change, then it is right to review the policy. So the facts have changed. 
Now, <laughs> this is very interesting, my brothers and sisters, because we know for sure that when the Delta was causing ravage, two doses were not enough for the Delta, because still Delta could be spread by the vaccinated people. Still, the vaccinated people could suffer with COVID. So now, we also understood very well by science that COVID vaccine, two jabs only have a protect. They just give you protection for 20 weeks. They cannot guarantee, but they give you some protection for 20 weeks. And after that, you need a jab, a, 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 a booster which only gives you protection for 10 weeks. And after that, you need another booster. So you need at least a, a booster every eight weeks for you to be protected. That's what science say. So the question is, was it practical? The answer is no. And in fact, they have actually admitted that this is actually not going to be practical. We cannot just jab people for the sake of jabbing. But now for the sake of this presentation, I want to go to The Guardian. Uh, that was on Monday the 31st, uh, 2022, 31st uh, uh, January 2022. It says, ministers plan to scrap vaccine mandate for NHS staff. Now listen to, the, uh, to what it says. Ministers have announced plans to scrap an uh, order forcing all NHS staff in England to get vaccinated against COVID in a U10 that will prevent an exodus of thousands of frontline health workers. Now, this was a U10 there was going to be an exodus of thousands of NHS workers. So what did the minister do? He made a U10. Could it be that the government feared that people will lose, people will go away and NHS will crumble? For I'm well informed that quite a lot of departments were going to close because of lack of staff. Several doctors, consultants, doctors, registrars, house officers, nurses, health workers, carers have not been vaccinated. Therefore, a lot would have walked out. And that was a huge blow for NHS. So what did the government do? They decided to ditch the policy. And they say ditching a policy that had that he had championed in spite of growing concern that it will endanger patient safety by triggering the loss of key personnel for the already understaffed the health service. So because the health is under the health service is understaffed, it was needful for the government to change its policy and they say because the science has tilted. But the question is, was it not the same argument all along? It was. Now how many people have been vaccinated? Quite a lot, but there were still 127,000, not yet. My brothers and sisters, it's very good to know that um, you are not the only one who have not been vaccinated for there are about 127,000 in the NHS. This is just England. We're not talking of Wales. We're not talking of Ireland. We're not talking of Scotland. This is just England. What exactly does that mean, my brothers and sisters? There's a lot of change in the government, isn't it? They change. They say one thing, they do another. They say one thing, they do another. Now the question is, can we trust the government? Don't worry about the government. I don't talk about the government. I just want to focus on what God expects from his children, looking at the fear. Because, you know, I cannot talk about government. Let me actually look at what this person says. He says, Javid also explains to remove immunization as a condition of working in the care homes, an approach that has already led to the loss of about 40,000, 40,000 in the sector. So there's serious shortages, is it? 40,000 have gone. Now 127,000 would have gone. What exactly does that mean? The fear that the health institutions will crumble has made the government to make that a U10. And also, maybe probably it has made them to accept that what they were doing was contrary to the real science. So the government was afraid. But maybe probably let's leave the government. Let's actually talk of those that has been vaccinated in fear for what could have happened if they would not have been vaccinated by the 1st of April that they will lose their jobs. It says... NHS uh, England immediately wrote to health uh, service leaders to tell them this change in government policy means we request that employers do not save notice. Employees 
do not save, uh, in fact, employers do not save notice of termination to employees affected by the vaccination as a condition of deployment. So they wrote urgently, please don't save them with notification of termination of contracts. Why? Because we've been serious problem. 60,000 would have been saved by their not these notices and beginning of February 60,000 would have lost their jobs and what would have happened to the operations? What would have happened to the surgical wards? What would have happened to the ITU wards? What would have happened to all these other departments? My brothers and sisters, with fear of what people can do, so does Protestant can, is Protestant, does Protestantism work? Yes, to protest its work, it works to stand for your rights. It works to remain consistent. He said the move comes after weeks of warning from staff groups that pressing ahead with the policy would lead to severe, uh, to even worse staff shortages, particularly in maternity service and especially in hospital in London and Birmingham, which have significant numbers of unvaccinated staff, notably nurses and midwives. I was talking to a colleague who said that, you know, there is a certain hospital in London there, about 300 doctors have not been vaccinated. So it would have been interesting, is it? Loads of nurses have not been vaccinated. It would have been interesting. So what did the government do? They feared. But now, don't worry about the government fear. Let's talk about we that have been vaccinated because of fear. See, NHS providers and uh, uh, the NHS Confederation, which both represent hospitals in England, warned that the decision to allow health and social care workers to continue working even if they remain unvaccinated could affect the drive to promote wider vaccination take up. So now to promote the drive for people to take vaccine, they have to make it, they have to make it mandatory. It is the same health minister who say that mandatory vaccines are introduced as a way of coercing people to take the vaccine. So people in fear of losing their jobs, they went for the vaccine. But the question is, why didn't we trust God that God can be with us? Thank God for those who are faithful. Thank God for those who have understood what they stand for. Thank God for those who are prepared to lose their jobs. God has vindicated them. But my brothers and sisters, I've got a challenge with my colleagues who have been preaching to us that we should be vaccinated. I've got a problem with my colleagues who have been stopping us from coming to church because we don't have vaccine. I've got a problem with you, my colleagues, you pastors, my colleagues, you elders, my colleagues. You have been speaking so much against the unvaccinated. So what are you going to do today? Says a senior NHS official added, there is a risk that other staff who have got vaccinated when they may not have, will feel let down. Oh yes, you feel let down because you've been vaccinated, is it? But the question is, who consented to be vaccinated? Why would you feel let down? Was it not within your right to say, I don't want to be vaccinated? Why then should you feel the let down today? My brothers and sisters, we may be frustrated now because we've made these decisions. But the question is, what can we do now? We have learned, is it? It's not science. It's politics. We fear to lose our jobs. And the devil used the instrument of fear. We fear we'll go hungry. We fear we'll lose our mortgages. We fear we will not be able to be up to date with our payments of our mortgages and our cars and all of those things. Therefore, we do things against our conscience. My brothers and sisters, one of the worst things I can do as a human being is to go against my conscience. There is no freedom when you go against our conscience. Always a principle should be a principle. And when I have made a decision, then I should not go against my conscience. That's why Martin Luther said, it is not safe for a man to go against his conscience. It's not safe. It's not good. But many of us are going to receive the mark of the beast. 
against our conscience simply because of fear. Fear. We learn from the book Last Day Events, page 173, paragraph 6. The time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. The mark of the beast will be un aged upon us. Those who have step by step yielded to worldly demands and conformed to worldly custom will not find it a hard matter to yield to the powers that be rather than subject themselves to derision, insult, threatenment, imprisonment, and, and death. We were not prepared to lose our jobs. We were not prepared to suffer. We were not prepared to look for another career. Therefore, we decided that let us be vaccinated. My brothers and sisters, with that kind of fear, the mark of the beast will be too great for us. Let's seriously consider where we are, my brothers and sisters. When we fear with something so simple, what happens when we come to something big? It will be very hard for us because of fear. Many of us and the devil has understood it and he knows that and he said the contest is between the commandments of God and the commandments of men. In this time the gold will be separated from dross in the church. <laughs> the gold will be separated from dross in the church. I was talking to my colleague yesterday. The big churches are now empty. People are not going to church anymore. What has happened? COVID has shaken the church. And we will wait when the real crisis has come, the National Sunday Law, at that time, gold will be separated from the dross. Look at the NHS today. Only 127,000 not vaccinated. The rest have succumbed to it. What exactly does that mean? A storm is coming. And in this storm, my brothers and sisters, if we fear we are not going anywhere, we will sink. But here's the words of uh, Jesus in Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Fear none of those things that shall suffer. Fear none of those things that shall suffer. Behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, that you may have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give you a crown. To fear it's seen as we learn from Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. But the fearful and the believing and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of, in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. And that's the second death. What exactly does that mean? When we fear, we'll be coerced by the devil to do anything. When we fear, we're in a serious problem. What we have learned so far, vaccine mandate, it has nothing to do with science. It's all politics. But now we make a choice of ourselves. And these policies, they are not universal in all countries. As children of God, God has given us an opportunity to trust in Him. Fear not, for I am with you. And indeed, the battle is to be surrendered to God who will fight the battles better. The war is already one long time ago. Therefore, fear not. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. Give us grace not to fear, but to trust in you. Blessed are those who trust in you, for they shall be established. O oh Lord, give us grace never to fear, but to, re be, to remain on principle and be truly principled in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, my brothers and sisters, God bless you. I will meet you in the next edition. Please share the message. Uh, please subscribe if you have not subscribed. And also, continue to pray for us as we seek to deliver this message. And I will encourage you to share your comments with us, share your concern with us. If you've got anything to say, we are ready to listen.